Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. Good morning all. Welcome to national webinar, Role of IQAC uh, in Higher Education Institutions, organized by Madhurka College of Commerce and Arts, Hyderabad. IQAC is an important function in the organization system and works towards the realization of the goals of goals and quality of the enhancement of the higher education institutions. The prime task of the IQAC is to develop consistent improvement in the overall performance of the college. It strives to channelize all efforts and measure measurements of the college towards promoting holistic academic excellence and also continued uh, vision, vision of the college. As per the mandate of the UGC New Delhi, IQAC submits every year self-reviewed progress report uh, annually to the NAC uh, compulsorily. It results achieved key areas and specially identified IQAC beginning of the academic year by the uh, division perspective plan. The perspective plan which includes and progress of the perspective plan uh, is annual quality assurance report that is AQAR uh, it shows it picturize the outcome of the college and it IQAC functioning act, um, actively in the colleges it uh, controls academic and administrative aspects and focusing on quality aspects of the organization it continuously works towards progress of quality uh, in the organizations thank you one and all for the participants welcome to badruka college webinar now i request dr rajesh agarwal vice principal and uh, webinar convener uh, to address i at the outset welcome all the participants of this webinar we are very glad to say that the participants are from all over the country and the remotest part from nagaland sikkim jammu kashmir to kanyakumari and from andaman and nicobar islands also we have participants from all over the country i am very happy to say that more than 4300 participants have registered for this webinar it is a great achievement for the college and for the iqac for conducting this webinar i wholeheartedly welcome our director general professor abhirama krishna to this webinar who is the keynote address addressee for this webinar i welcome all the team who have been joining this webinar and would like to say a few words about our college badruka college of commerce and arts when raja bankatlalji badruka placed the first brick of our institution in 1950 it was just the first step to a dream that was to mark 70 years of legacy and more from an educational institution that began as a degree college we have expanded into various institution now having more than 4000 students every year badruka college of commerce and arts to its name the honor of being the first commerce college to be affiliated with usmania university badruka as a family is built on purely meritorious students highly educated staff with a combined experience of over a century and the relentless non teaching staff who are silently making our lives easier another significant part of the badruka family is its alumni assembly settled in different parts of the world as significant positions the alumni of our institution carry the badruka torch into the world honestly it wouldn't or at all be an exaggeration to say that badruka has played a significant role in driving change the reason for the institution's success par excellence is its approach to 
education. Here, we believe in an overall development of the student, every student having equal opportunities to choose, to choose, develop their extracurricular skills. The students of Badruka have been around the nation and have won prizes. Many students of our college have participated in the Republic Day Parade at Delhi. The NCC cadets have joined the army. The sports personalities had played the international events in, in the extracurricular activities. Many of our students have participated in the national level competition and brought laurels to our college. Apart from this, we have different clubs to own the skills of our students. Like we have management club, we have arts club, we have cultural club, we have literary club and many more to the students facility. We have an excellent we have an excellent campus with, uh, with a very good infrastructure facilities available in the college. The present secretary, Sri Mukun Lalji Badrukka, has always encourages us to, to do more and more activities and to bring the laurels to the college as well as to keep up the standards. So I, on behalf of Badrukka College of Commerce and Arts, staff, students and management welcome you all to this webinar. Thank you one and all for participating. Thank you. Uh, good morning everyone and I hope uh, you and your families are all safe in this times of pandemic. Uh, it is my great privilege to introduce uh, today's key speaker, uh, Professor Abhi Ramakrishna. Sir is also the Director General of Zaid Ghasiram Gopikishan Badruka Educational Society. Sir has done his BTEC Mechanical from REC Varangal and has also done his PGDM from a very reputed institution, IIM Bangalore. Sir, with over 40 years of his vast experience, has been a key person in developing and implementing multiple corporates. He has worked in corporates for more than 30 years. And in last one decade, sir has been associated with various educational institutions. Sir has a lot of specialization areas. These major areas of specialization are sales, human resource, leadership, and quality management. Sir has also been an executive coach for many CEOs and senior management personnel in multiple corporations. It is our great privilege, sir, to listen to you today. Now I request you to kindly take over and guide us. Thank you. Thanks for the wonderful introduction. And thank you, Dr. Ashok Agarwal for inviting me uh, to share my thoughts on the role of IQAC in higher educational institutions. My thanks are also due to Mr. Naveen, uh, who is heading the IQAC at uh, the Padruka uh, College of Commerce and Arts. So let me, um, and I'd like to first, before I share my thoughts, I thought it is fit to acknowledge uh, my presentation. First of all, my acknowledgement goes to all the participants who are viewing this webinar. As part of the registration process, um, we have asked the participant, what is that one question you would like to be answered by the speaker as part of his presentation? Uh, we have received a lot of questions from the participants and my team has um, classified them into three categories and uh, 384 comments is forming part of today's session. The second category is uh, some technical clarifications on how do I upload this uh, report of uh, the for the NAC and so on, 
and all those technical questions uh, i would request the participants who have asked those questions uh, to kindly contact uh, my colleague mr navin and we at badruka would assure you that any technical clarifications uh, we would certainly help you but that is not going to be forming part of this webinar because we have only 75 minutes uh, for of this interaction the third category of questions were pertaining to um, very relevant very good questions but not pertaining to the topic today uh, these are some like how do i make uh, the online uh, programs more interactive and so on so while i like to thank all the participants for sharing those questions uh, i might be disappointing a large number of people who are not uh, i mean their questions are not part of this topic so my apologies but i am sure um, the college would organize many more such uh, webinars and cover some of those very interesting questions you have posed my acknowledgement is also due to my iqac team there are 21 of them and i had a uh, brief interactions with all of them just to capture uh, their experiences and their experiences of a large number of iqac across uh, the colleges in india what has been their experience so that has actually helped me to structure my uh, presentation today my thanks are also due to uh, the quality guru philip crosby and my experience working with niit niit gave me an exposure formally into the quality world and i am a certified qus and qipm member of the philip crosby associates us and i would like to thank uh, philip crosby for educating me and making me um, what you call aware of the different aspects of quality friends i would like to thank all of you for sparing your valuable time uh, to hear me as you all know there are three quality gurus uh, who have done a lot of human service to the quality movement in the world one is mr joseph jura and the other is the edward deming and of course the third legend is philip crosby while the first two mr jurang and uh, deming focused on lot of statistical method of arriving at quality which are very very useful for especially for the manufacturing sector the service sector um, is very very Uh, useful from the thoughts and philosophies of philip crosby so a lot of ideas um, since i've been you know inducted uh, from philip crosby uh, associates i will share with you some of the thoughts and my own experiences in the quality movement and therefore what should be the role of iqac in higher educational institutions from my interactions with all of the people currently the majority of the iqac teams across the country are playing a very very important role in the administrative aspects of quality all the iqac team are responsible for all aspects of quality in the institutions their primary role is to initiate quality at the colleges plan for quality supervise and submit a report for accrediting uh, with the nac once the accreditation is given then their role is to formulate and ensure that all the nac guidelines post accreditation and how do we sustain the quality movement in the colleges and periodically submit report to the nac but 
friends i would like to pause a little and ask people who are hearing to this webinar especially people who are in the youtube to use your chat feature and tell me what is your definition of quality or what do you think when you hear the word quality means to you so i'll just pause for a few moments and i will wait for some of your responses so people who are there on the youtube please use the chat mode and i would request my colleague mr mitesh uh, to give me some responses mr mitesh once you get some responses you can as you are getting you can let me know mr mitesh can you hear me because of the technology i think there is a little lag uh, so i will wait for at least a couple of responses mr mitesh can you hear me hello sir yeah just one or two responses uh, you you got you can just read out uh, sir uh, there are responses 15 16 okay. 16 no no not the number i'm talking about the definition of quality did you get any response sir quality cost money and quality brings money okay quality Good. means infrastructure results ah uh. quality means wonderful result of work fantastic performance and excellence in pursuits okay so thank you and i am sure there will be a lot of responses but uh, that is enough for the audience to um, uh there is there is lot of confusion because more than one lot of articles books but um, Uh, seminars and webinars are being held across the world on quality so each hello hello yes sir each person understand quality in his or her own way and one of the role of iqac uh in higher education should be across the college when anybody asks any student or the staff or the iqac team or the management what is quality then everybody should have one definition because unless we know what according to us is quality all the initiative across the college um uh, would be not aligned and therefore friends my first um, message to all the iqac team is to bring awareness and have their own definition there is no one which is right but there is a need for everybody to understand what is quality according to them i like the definition of philip crosby who defined quality saying quality is not goodness excellence best quality export quality which is all very very vague according to him quality is conformance to requirements so when i say my cell phone has five features and i give my customer those five features according to me that is quality when a customer asks for those five features and i give him 22 features thinking that i am giving more quality the customer may not see the value and therefore 
conformance to that requirement is not there therefore friends according to philip crosby the definition of quality is conformance to requirements so whatever the commitment the vision mission quality policy the college has if all of us right from the management down below at all levels if we know what is that definition only then our commitment to quality will happen and therefore i urge all the participants who are listening to this webinar to have your own definition of quality so that we are all aligned to that so this is one message which i thought i will communicate the current scenario across india most of the iqs ac are playing a very very useful uh, role in controlling quality when i say controlling quality they have given a commitment uh, to the nac and they keep monitoring to see whether they are within that quality parameters i am also surprised and curious to know how these colleges have formed their iqact and uh, my responses interacting with many of you each one have their own way of creating the iqact and uh, many times you know uh, they form the team and uh, there are uh, what do you call seven areas for uh, you know the quality movement across as defined by the nac accreditation so they divide saying each team three members take care of one of those areas and uh, they focus on the iqac team is therefore confined to those one or two areas lot of them follow quality assurance that means once the quality certificate accreditation is given how do they in enhance the quality and therefore the iqac team takes on the accountability role so anything which goes wrong they are held responsible and a lot of them have done very interesting uh, experience i'm sure you will have a lot of stories to share but since we are in the virtual mode i'm not able to welcome some of those experiences but i'm saying the iqac team across colleges are accountable for sustaining and assuring and enhancing the quality now there are very interesting thing when it comes to auditing um that takes place periodically before the uh, authorities actually come to the college and uh, rate the colleges lot of them tell me the iqac team that they are not getting um, a lot of cooperation when they do the audit because for a lot of them they think that the auditors who come are doing the policing and when they capture some of the non conformances uh they cut a very sorry figure in front of the management so they look at these auditors as the police guys who have come to catch uh, their mistakes some of the colleges have some cozy relationship with the auditors when they come they say okay don't put it on record you tell me orally and we will rectify uh, so that there is nothing on record but a large number of colleges have the professional approach to audit and i would urge all the colleges please treat the iqac as professional auditors who are there to enhance your uh, quality so that when the actual nac comes for inspection we all get a very very good score so friends i like to share one small experience um with the, when i was in niit my ceo told the finance auditor who came to do audit for my branch mr sonso you go and 
audit the branch of um, abhiram and if you give me three pages of audit report i will give you excellent and abhiram will get poor rating but if you come with one page a uh, report then you will get a poor rating and abhiram will get excellent rating so we used to treat it like a joke we used to welcome him and say you are coming here to help us so that we are not having any non conformances so friends i would urge all of you to cooperate with whoever is coming to do your internal audit periodically so that they are helping us to spot mistakes we can correct them and we enhance the quality in our respective colleges so my second message to uh, the people uh, who are involved in um, enhancing the quality at their respective colleges is kindly treat the auditors uh, with a lot of seriousness and welcome them because they are proactive in telling you how you can uh, plug some of those non performing now i and that all work is a process so in a institute there are a number of processes like the admission process the examination process you can time table process many many things so i would like all of us to understand that every work can be considered as a process and if there is a thing called a process it will have an input to the process and the process takes place and they in turn produce what is called an output that output becomes the input for the next process and the process again happens and they in turn produce an output which is again an input to some other process this is according to me a fundamental understanding that is required so i would like you all whoever is uh, you know hearing to this webinar to take a small piece of paper and the figures which you see put your own process any process examination process admission process whatever the process you are you know working and you will see there are four dimensions to that process first is there is a process procedures second there is a standard that is expected uh, out of that uh, process and they may be re human resources facilities equipment that would be uh, helpful to the process to happen and finally the person who is doing that his or her own training and knowledge now let me take a small example suppose i take an admission process now the first process is creating an application form now that could be done by somebody and for him or her that itself is a process if we know normally what happens is when i ask somebody come with your application form 2019 2020, 2020 last year's application form they change and say 2020 to 2021 now if i am the process owner of that application form i would like to see what has been the performance standard of this application form how do i enhance it it could be a better paper gsm font uh can i add little more content make um, you know reduce some of the uh, stuff which is not relevant all these when i do and of course the procedure for the admission what are some of those fields that i have to include eliminate all these will help me to ensure that my process is perfect and as an output i create to somebody else who is 
asking the student to fill that form <coughs> so friends again i would like to pause and uh, you think of a process for about a minute or so and quickly sketch what is the input to your process and in terms of procedure performance standard facilities training what are some of those areas where it is a weak area because in order for me to complete my process suppose my facility and equipment are not of good quality then my output will get affected so i'll just pause you can quickly sketch your own process wherever you are working so that i will share what i um, you know want you to understand what you can do in your own process to enhance quality so i will pause for two or three minutes if you are listening to this webinar through another colleague of yours or friends you can jointly do it it's not a problem <clears throat> <clears throat> this silence in a virtual world is you know very very threatening but uh, since if it is a in the real world we can see participants you know doing some activity but i'm sure um you can say spend pause a little time because this is according to me very very important uh, concept to understand if we really want to play a valuable role in our respective institutions so friends um some of you might have been uh, have completed or some of you might be work in progress but for want of time i'm sharing the first thing is to understand whatever we are doing we are creating an output which becomes the input for somebody else so i would request all of us to understand in whatever way we are doing whatever work we are doing we are doing a process and there are a lot of these inputs and four dimensions which contribute to my success in the process only then we can create a quality output now in any one of these chain if the quality is sacrificed then you cannot expect the output which we would like to have so friends i would like all of us to see what dimensions of these is affecting our process today what i can do what is the support my team can help me what is the support i seek from the management so that i can create a quality work and when i do that we all in the institute are internal customers to somebody else and only then my output can become a good input for my other process owner so therefore friends treat all work in whatever you are doing as a process look at this figure and see how you can enhance the process quality so that your output can be a great effort now i'm saying that 
if you have been in this as a IQAC movement, recertification, second cycle, third cycle, we should go beyond what NAC expects. In everything the IQAC team does, we need to add value. So my appeal to all the IQAC team who are listening here is there is a need for you to create a quality culture across the uh, institute. Only when you create a quality culture, you can create value. So I feel that everybody in the college should play the IQAC team and uh, we should create a culture where everybody wants to improve and excel. If you can do that, your role will become minimal, but you will create huge value to your institute. And I think that is very, very important because I interacted with some people who have done excellent work in their college, consistently getting good ranking, but creating a culture of quality, I think, is very, very important. So I would request all the IQAC team members to think, how do I create a quality culture in my organization? And it is everybody's job. Quality is not only the job of IQAC. That is what I want to uh, convey. Second, create a number of processes and whatever decisions, most of the de decisions should be based on data. Because in life, they say, in God we believe, but in data we trust. Data cannot lie. So the more and more culturally you are driven uh, to measurement data, you can then only improve and see to what extent you have improved. Uh, if we all say, yeah, I put, uh, you know, the results, for example, that is a data. I've got 90% of my students scoring first class. And this time it is 98%. Then I can clearly say that I have done improvement in my results. Even our own appraisals. A lot of us are unhappy at the end of our appraisal period because increments or whatever is not as per expectation. The reporting manager is not very happy. Um, you thought that you did very well. But if the API scores are well defined in the beginning of the academic year, and that is continuously evaluated, reviewed, at the end of the appraisal period, if it is data driven, then doing the appraisal becomes very, very easy. So let's all of us create data-based decision-making in the organization because, as they say, things that get measured get managed. The other value-added role of IQAC is to create a culture of innovation and create creativity in the organization. I think uh, this is a weak area in many of our institutions. Uh, because education is basically conforming to standards, conforming to the syllabus, conforming to uh, the exams and so on. But today in the COVID era, a lot of innovation is forced upon us. But let's create a culture of innovation even in good times so that we can add value. This COVID has given opportunities. Uh, for example, this international webinar, even if in the real world we conduct, it will not be possible for many people across the country to travel. And even if they travel, uh, you know, it would cost them a lot as well as create a lot of carbon pollution. Now we are able to, Dr. Agarwal, says there's more than 4,000 people viewing this webinar. Imagine, uh, that is a great thing. 
but if you can do anything like this innovatively we are able to create value to a large number of people so the role of iqac is to move more beyond quality and see can we create a culture of innovation and creativity last month one of the college in hyderabad organized a quiz competition on subjects to the students and i'm sure i thought it was a very very innovative idea of how they conducted so these kind of things uh, will help uh, people appreciate and add value to the role of iqas there are actually three kinds of staff in colleges a few of them are engaged actively engaged they are very thrilled to come they are very very uh, what you call motivated and um, they are self motivated and they would like uh, you not know, to do more than what is required a large number of um, staff are engaged they come and do their job and these i call them as the engaged people and few very few i hope there are none in many colleges um, are actively disengaged they are demotivated for whatever reason so if you take a normal distributed curve you will find about 10 to 20% of the people are actively engaged these are the people who are self motivated about 80% of them uh, would be the engaged people and uh, hopefully less than 0.5% are the actively disengaged people the role of iqac is to take the help of the actively engaged people request them for support and make them work on the engaged people otherwise there is a danger of the actively disengaged people working on the engaged people and when more and more engaged people move to the actively disengaged people then they are counterproductive to the quality movement in the college so friends identify who are your actively engage uh, staff and take their support and uh, you will create magic um, as far as quality is concerned similarly in the student community you will find all the three categories there are actively engaged students there are engaged students and there are actively disengaged students can we identify all the actively engaged in all our each of the classes each of the sections and help and support them to work on the engaged people that way we will create a large number of actively engaged people in the quality movement of college and i am saying it in 5 minutes but i know it's a huge challenge for the iqac team but when the iqac team does this i can assure you their role becomes very easy and once the culture is set in nobody can stop so friends if you really want to add value to your role as an iqac member create a culture of quality and create a culture of innovation and creativity um a few more slides before that i then afterwards i'll invite you know people to so now friends this is a very important um, i'm going to show you a slide following this uh, slide i'm going to show you a slide i hope all of you are awake uh, you read a passage in that slide and i would like you to count the number of letter e which is appearing in the slide i'll again repeat my instruction i'm going to show you a passage in the following slide i will give you some time and you count the number of the letter e 
how many times it is appearing in the slide and uh, you can through the chat give a response and again i would request uh, mr bitesh to read out the numbers so my next slide is following okay now i'll show you this slide please kindly read uh, the letter e how many times it is appearing and you can send the response to um, through your chat Okay, so I'm changing and going back to my earlier slide. And now we request whoever has counted to give your response using the chat mode. And I request Mr. Mitesh to let me know some of the numbers. Yeah. yeah, read out those numbers, Mr. Mitesh. <clears throat> Mr. Mitesh, any response? Hello? Mr. Mitesh, did you get any response? Sir, there are multiple responses. The maximum response we have got is 18. 10, 12, 15, 16, multiple, but maximum people have given response as 18. Okay. Uh, so Mitesh tells me that there are multiple responses ranging from 10, 12, uh, 16, 11, but maximum responses is 18. Okay. So thank you. Uh, actually, we are not bothered about the responses, but if somebody is curious to know what is the right answer, there are 18 is that is appearing in that slide. But that is not important. What I'm trying to tell you is while you are doing your work, if you come to know that somebody is auditing, then we tend to do a little bit of relaxation. We can say, yeah, if we make a mistake, Anywhere there is going to be an inspection, anywhere there is going to be an audit and somebody will anyway, you know, point out and we can rectify. So my next message to all the people who are listening to this webinar is that don't wait for somebody to inspect. 
let's do it whatever we are doing right the first time so if we create a culture like why should we have an inspector to inspect what we are doing why can't we do this on our own i remember my professor at the iim uh, professor valecha he was sharing one experience of his the first time he traveled to japan uh, because of the jet lag uh, he couldn't sleep so in the middle of the night he thought let me take a small walk in the corridor and he was you know moved out of his room and he was um, taking a walk in the corridor he found a young a boy putting brasso on the knobs of the uh, doors and polishing it it was very very bright but he was still doing it at around 2 or 2:30 in the night and when he asked this boy what are you doing he said i'm trying to make this shine very well he said it's already shining so why are you again doing it he said no no i want this to be the shiniest among all the floors so he used to always say that nobody is asking him to do and no but, but he has got time because he is in the ship and he thought let me make all the knobs in this floor shinier than the other floors so what i am trying to tell you friends don't wait for somebody to inspect and point out let's all cultivate um doing it right the first time that should be a kind of culture that so this according to philip crosby he says it is called the zero defect instead of inspecting let's do it right the first time zero defect is a measurement as well as an attitude many of us will say oh we cannot get zero defect and that's why we have plus minus tolerances and so on but many times in real life friends we are following zero defect if i were to ask you in the last 10 years when you were going out of your college to your residence how many times by mistake you went into the neighboring house i would say it is almost zero i don't think any time you would have gone to a wrong house so and when it comes to attitude we all this most of the time follow zero defect if i were to ask you the glass of water which is there in front of you has only 0.01% cyanide how many of you are willing to drink that glass of water none of us will dare to drink that water so in many times when it comes to our personal life we are not tolerating any ambiguity or any tolerance we want zero defect how many of you listening to the seminar webinar if i tell you that there was a mistake in your pay slip of 80 rupees it is okay but you will go to the accounts person and get it uh, what do you call rectified so many times in our um, personal life we are following zero defect i would like all of us to have this attitude even when it comes to our work environment in hindi we call this some of us follow what is called the chalta hai attitude and we'll say no no now there is no time so let's okay we'll see it later and we are not happy with the work but we still pass it off as our work because we have to meet our deadlines so let's all create a measurement of zero defect for many it may not be able to achieve it is okay as long as we are in that journey but let's create an attitude of excellence and we will become um more and more not tolerating um any defect and uh, let's move towards that excellence so i am reminded of two words honesty and integrity and when i ask people what is the difference between honesty and integrity 
we get a lot of um, uh, what you call responses. Some of them say there is no difference. Some of them say, yeah, there is slight difference. But to me, friends, honesty is I go in my car at around 11 o'clock in the morning. I see the traffic signal, which is red. I see the policeman there. I stop my car. That is being honest. In spite of this, I, uh, what do you call, bypass and move and cross the signal. Then I'm being dishonest. I move, go to the same junction at 11.30 in the night. No cop, no policeman. I see the same red light. Do I stop my vehicle? That is integrity. So what I'm saying is just because somebody is monitoring, you are following certain rules and regulations, that is being honest. But when nobody is monitoring, are you true to yourself? That is integrity. So when you want to follow the quality in everybody in the college, in our workplace, let's all be true to ourselves. And let's create masterpieces. If I am doing a slide presentation to my class, can I make it the best so that your signature there in the slides? So if each of us play that role and have an attitude of zero defect, I think we can create a culture of quality in the colleges. So friends, the system of quality, we should slowly move from being inspection, audit, to being proactive and preventing um, the error to happen in the first place. So I would request all the um, staff who are listening to this webinar, let's create moving from audit, inspection, to being uh, you know, true to ourselves and moving from inspection to prevention. So the need to be proactive, I think, is very, very important. So let me um, quote a few of my experiences as case study, because um, this will help us uh, to say that it works. So when I was with as a CEO of uh, Roxas, there were some students from St. Francis College in Hyderabad who came to conduct a survey. And the first question one of the girl students asked me was, what happens to your company if the HR department is wound up? I said, nothing happens. So she was shocked. And uh, she said, nothing happens. Yeah, I said, because nothing happens because we don't have an HR department. So she was further shocked. She said, you, your organization doesn't have an HR department. I said, no. Then who manages the HR um, function? I said, every manager in the company manages. So we don't have a HR function. She couldn't believe. So she said, are people happy without a HR policy? I said, we have HR policy created by everybody in the organization. But are they happy? She asked me. I said, you go and find out. So she asked her other colleague, you continue with the other questions. Let me go and meet some of the employees of Roxas. So then she came back and said, sir, everybody is happy and I want to join your organization. I said, but there is no HR department. So what I'm trying to tell you through this uh, small incident is there's no need to have a HR department because the role of the HR should be with all managers across the country. I mean, across the company. So likewise, friends, quality should not be only confined to the IQACT. Every one of us should be a part of that movement. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, many times the colleges also treat IQAC as some kind of a support function. And therefore, uh, they feel okay, they are doing a good job and it has less value. 
uh, i would urge all the management who are listening here to encourage the iqac team and give them the equal importance like any other function because they are doing a fantastic uh, value add to the college the other thing is iqac team looks for some ben uh, benchmark best practices and follow some of the good practices while that is very very good and important can we create our own benchmarks so that other colleges you know um, uh, emulate us i think the role of iqac should be to create their own uh, you know benchmarks so let's not just bother about what are some of the best practices other colleges are doing and therefore we can also introduce that that is one way to begin with but i'm sure i've been interacted with many of you uh, at least in the uh, some of the cities and i think every iqac team is capable of creating its own benchmark for their colleges i would like to share one or two more experiences of mine before moving to the next slide while i was in niit we had what we were 1800 employees and uh, each one of us said we will do a small individual correction uh, correct um, corrective action uh, a project so each one of us which was a 30 day plan we identify any area in our workplace how to improve and create a report at the end of 60 days we started measuring on that improvement to see whether we have improved and we also had what is called the corrective action team that means four five of us took up a problem for which is affecting the team and created a, a project and that was reviewed at the end of 90 days so two 1800 employees had 1800 individual corrective action and 300 corrective action teams were there so you can imagine in a year we created more than you know 1500 projects and you can imagine the quality nobody has asked us to do that but within one year we could show substantial improvement in the quality so friends we need to have such kind of initiatives and a good quality policy which will help us uh, to take such initiatives and i feel the iqac team can play a very very important role in this direction last concept which i would like to share is how do you measure quality so many times we are having the percentages indexes so if we say last year uh, the past percentage was 90% and this year it is 95% uh, we say we great improvement last year we say we made so many measurements um, mistakes and now we have reduced so by so many percentage instead of that if we can say and convert all those mistakes into monetary terms then that would be very very striking so for example this is called price of non conformance so philip crosby calls it as pomp price of non conformance so if you convert all our mistakes into monetary terms our salary basis whatever you want to have and tell the management that last year we made these mistakes and today we rectified those mistakes and by rectifying those mistakes we saved 16 lakhs that will catch the attention than saying that we reduce our mistakes from 60% to 30%. So if you can convert some of those mistakes into monetary terms then it will catch and the management will really appreciate your head of department will really appreciate. So one of the role of the IQAC is to sensitize people to convert the mistakes into um, monetary terms then you can always say oh how much we saved actually Uh, to the colleges and that i am sure any management will uh, really appreciate finally friends 
before I invite uh, Mitesh to uh, have the Q&A session, uh, I want all the IQAC who are playing a fantastic uh, role um, in the IQAC movement uh, to move to the next level. So ultimately, we should create um, what I call is the level five IQAC um, organizations. So let me tell you, if you see this slide on the Y axis, you have the levels and on the X axis, you have the time. So initially, a lot of us, when we begin the quality movement for NAC accreditation, we are what I call as the level one, which is the quality control. Then um, we learn a lot, meet some of those standards, requirements, and then we try to improve. So the second level is ensuring that quality is consistent and that is called quality assurance. The third level is having achieved the quality level two, we want to improve and enhance the quality, which is level three. Now, the fourth level is where everybody, all students, non-teaching staff, teaching staff, management, all become partners. And that, according to me, when you achieve, you have created a level four a quality organization. And lastly, when the management calls the IQAC team, not only for quality, but for any decision, you know, be it admission, be it new uh, courses, in any of their decisions, including uh, their own personal, you know, children um, uh, admission, what they should do in anything. If they call the IQAC team, IQAC team can say we have become the trusted advisor for the college. Now, I would like each one of you to think where, at what level you are currently in. And I'm sure with your effort, you will move to the next level when you consciously undertake some of the learning from this webinar. So I would like all the uh, IQAC team in summary to deliver real values so that we are in tune with the vision objectives and each of us can create a very competitive advantage to our colleges. And personally, also, we can say we made a huge difference to our college. And for that, training, training, training on quality across all levels is the key for success. So the leadership and governance plays a very, very important role. Top management commitment is very, very essential. Kind of benefits, need for independence for the IQAC team to work, handling the transitions when some of them retire, because many times when a senior faculty who is heading the IQAC team retires, the new incumbent finds it a little difficult. So it should not be uh, dependent on one individual. It should be a movement and it should be institutionalized. Let's build a lot of projects, execute through this quality improvement and proactively decide what should be our communica communication strategy to our teams as far as quality is concerned. Finally, the culture for improvement will happen. I would like to quote, some people are so good at learning tricks of the trade that they never learn the trade. So I would like the IQAC team, don't look for learning tricks learn the trade itself. And I'm sure many of you are already doing that. I wish you all the best. And the quality journey is very, very exciting. In conclusion, I would like to say there are three stages of this journey. One is we should have a conviction that quality will work. Then we move on to commitment. And finally, we um, become a convert. So I'll give a small example. I see children playing football near my house. They're all excited to play football. They kick the ball wherever. And they're all 
uh, have a conviction that they enjoy playing football. Only thing you don't know who's scoring the goal for which team. Then you have the Mohan Bagans and all the uh, you know the teams uh, who have commitment. They have a strong team and they have a commitment to win and they play for their team. So from conviction they move to a commitment. And then we have people like Pile, the legends in football who drink, sleep, think only football. So everybody in the quality movement should enjoy the conviction level. Then their own conviction will move to commitment. And finally, I can say they will become the evangelist of quality. So I'd like to thank uh, you for all your patient listening. And now I move to Mr. Nitesh for uh, asking me some questions. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for the such a great insight into ICE, IQA, and Before we end the session, I would please take a few questions uh, which our participants, uh, participants have asked. Uh, I think uh, we have. I think we have enough time for the uh, Kindly, uh, please, sir. Uh, um, uh, first question is. Uh, first question was uh, 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 Mr. Temjen Wabang. Correct? Am I pronouncing yes. right, Mr. And he is from Nagaland. Yeah. So he has asked a question: Is NAC assessment compelling institutions? to focus more on activities and reports than improving academic performance of students? Uh, I think this is a very interesting question. Uh, unfortunately, it is true to a large number because that is not the intention of NAC. But the way we implement, uh, we think that as long as we are uh, meeting those requirements, we have done our job. So it is not the fault of the NAC, but I feel it is the fault of our uh, team, which says, okay, they are not compelling institute, but they have to have some way to distinguish the good from the best. So I feel, uh, therefore, my urge to all the IQAC team, don't be thinking that they are compelling you. They are not forcing you, but they are giving you some guidelines. And I'm sure each one of us can uh, go beyond that. Um, these activities, reports, are basically to rank and give us where we are so that we can improve and improve our rating. Um, okay, so there is another question from uh, Louis Xavier from Chennai. Uh, how can we improvise in technology in IQAC? Yeah, um, today a lot of improvement can take place in collection of data because I find a large number of um, people in the IQAC and the colleges are um, taking a lot of time in collating data and generating reports. So if we have some kind of an ERP where we can have alumni database, alumni participating, any kind of reports can be generated. So we can definitely use um, what you call technology, which will make our reporting time less so that we can devote more time to create a culture, train people, Otherwise, today I find a large number of IQAC team members, since they are also regularly, um, what you call, uh, teaching and they are doing their other job, uh, they are not finding time. So, a lot of time goes in collecting and reporting data. So, I think technology will certainly help. Um, I have another one question from Mail. Mailiva Ganan from Mailadurai, Tamil Nadu. What are the strategies of IQAC? I think uh, this webinar would have given you 
some uh, you know directions on how you can strategize for quality but just to ask uh, i mean give you one or two quick response uh, i think every institute should have a quality policy and like we all have vision mission for our institutions can we also have a quality policy and create a team to say in each of those areas how do we take initiative and involve people so that more and more um, this becomes a quality movement uh, do you have time for few more questions a uh, couple of more questions can okay. be answered sir uh, um sure uh, these questions i um, one there is ms nikila bhagwat how do you separate the institutional distinctiveness and best practices uh i think the more and more you have best practices these are very interesting questions i'm trying to understand um these are very the best practices will make you uh, different from other institutes so the more you are doing a large number of best practices as compared to other institutes you will have your own institutional distinctiveness and over a period of time you will set the benchmark for others and therefore i feel uh, first is best practices and you can create your own differentiation uh, i think we have come to the, i would like to thank uh, dr garwal uh, <clears throat> mr navin for uh, the iqac team and mr mitesh for inviting me and um, i thank all of you for you know patiently listening to this webinar over to them thank you sir i now request dr rajesh agarwal to propose a vote of thanks Uh, I request Dr. Rajesh Agarwal sir to kindly propose the vote of thanks. At the outset, I thank Professor Avi Rama Krishna ji, Director General, Pet Ghasi Ram Gopi Kishan Patrika Educational Society, for sparing his valuable time in spite of his day-long busy schedules. He has spared a lot of time for giving this lecture, delivering the lecture, and hope. the participants from all over the country those who have participated in this webinar have benefited have benefited from this uh, webinar and the inputs given by professor abhirama krishna ji is equally important as well as implementable in all the educational institutions to grow further and get good rankings in the nac not only the rankings but also to equip them with the high quality standards requirements of the current scenario i thank all the participants from the country those who have participated some of them i would like to name the places here from madurai solapur surat patna pune pondicherry ambala kant gujarat patan telangana and tamil nadu and all you have seen sikkim nagaland and all i hope this has a very good impact on the educational institutions and i wholeheartedly thank our nac coordinator mr navin and mr mitesh mr ramakrishna who is not in the scene here mr hayat baja the technical person pro who has supported us in conducting this webinar and i thank all the persons who are related to this seminar i thank dr raki madam who is on the back stage for preparing this webinar and certificates and all i thank deepa for conducting this uh, webinar in helping us in conducting this webinar and also preparation of the certificate i hope all of you will get the certificate the link will be shared in the youtube chat box you all have to uh, fill up the feedback form and based on that feedback form you all will get the certificate of participation thank you one and all
for sparing this valuable time thank you sir for joining us thank you